Good evening folks, uh, this is Ben Holden coming at you, this is just after midnight on Friday night um, and you know I, I'm really excited to, uh, to talk to you about what I feel God has revealed to me this week. Um, so you know I, I, wanted, I want you to know that you know I've taken this, I've taken this role you know, of doing a devotional, um, I've, I've taken it quite seriously because I think this is an opportunity for, hopefully, for God to speak through me. Um, and you know, I really pray that whatever it is that that, that God leads me to discuss, um, you know, lands. Uh, even if it just lands with one person, then you know this, you know, the the prayer and the sort of seeking God that I've done over the last few days has has been worthwhile so um, I wanted to you know I wanted to first start with um, you know what what I feel um, you know being a Christian is and I always sort of approached this I always looked at it from the perspective of you know Christians are well we're different number one we are definitely different we are called for a higher purpose. God expects a higher standard from us. Um, you know, He says that we're part of the world, but we're not of the world. Um, and you know, hopefully, some of what I'm going to share today um, will really encourage some people who maybe, you know, might not feel like necessarily they, um, you know, have the right point of view, or that they necessarily, um, you know, maybe what they think or what. They feel God is is convicting them about is is necessarily contradictory to what a lot of you know people in the world would necessarily have us believe. Um, so I'd been uh, I'd really been having a think about you know what what I was to talk about. I prayed about it. Um, you know I, I, I always sort of resort to the scriptures uh, because that's where you're going to find the truth um, and one of the, the scriptures that I wanted to talk about was Ephesians 4.14 um, which I will find quickly so in Ephesians 4.14 and today we're reading from the NLT um, in 4.14 it says, <clears throat> let's start from, uh, let's start from verse 11. Now these are gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. <clears throat> Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Um, so I think, you know, us as Christians, we really need to, we need to be grounded in in the Word. Um, we need to, you know, if if ever there's confusion over a topic or over anything, we really need to be in the Word to guide us in the way that's righteous um, and the way, you know, that God uh, wants us to walk. Um, and I think the Bible. You know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of conversation surrounding um, you know what what God's word says about different things. Um, but I think that it's it's well it's written in black and white. So I think a lot of the time, um, you know, if we can diligently seek God's word on on really anything, uh, we have to trust that He's going to highlight His truth to us. Um, but we have to have an open heart to receive that. Um, and, you know, I think that so many, and I know that for me, 
Um, you know, I've gone through periods of my life where certainly in my faith I have been tossed around. Um, you know, tossed and blown around by every wind of new teaching. I mean, the analogy that I give is like a feather blowing in the wind, being tossed hither and thither. Um, and, you know, I think that it's only when you really start to ground yourself in what the Bible says about topics, um, then, you know, that's, that's where our, our firm foundation lies. Um, you know, everyone knows the analogy of the man who built his house on the sand. Um, and, you know, this, this is the rock. Um, you know, God's word and, you know, Jesus Christ is our rock. Um, and, you know, I really think that, especially in the times that we find ourselves in, in these sort of, you know, some people call it the last days, um, you know, in the times that we find ourselves in now, you know, we need to be grounded in God's word. Um, another scripture um, that was revealed to me was, uh, was actually uh, Galatians 1, verse 6 to 9. Bear with me while I find it. Um, Galatians 1. <clears throat> so it says, I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are fo following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. Let God curse fall on anyone, including us, or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preach to you. I say again that we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news than the one you welcomed, let that person be cursed. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Um, I was only actually going to read up to verse 9, but I think verse 10 was actually the, that was the finisher. Um, we're not here to please people. Um, you know, as Christians, um, you know, it's our job as Christians, and it's, our, it's God's expectation of us to come alongside people and yes, put an arm around them. But I think there needs to be a clear distinction of the fact that we are different and that we do hold ourselves and God holds us as his followers to a completely different standard than the world. Um, and I think that we have to be a shining light in the darkness and that doesn't mean that we are necessarily, um, you know, that we are necessarily accepting of absolutely everything that's out there. Um, I think that, you know, in, in, in you know, it's written in the Bible as well that there's going to be an awful lot of of confusion. I mean, I've just read it, um, even just tonight, that there's going to be, you know, uh, messages that are dressed up as good news that actually are the opposite. Um, so I think that, I suppose, my real message to everyone. Um, and this wasn't meant to be a sermon, but I felt, I really felt convicted and led um, to share this with you. Um, and, you know, I've, I've really searched my heart about this one. Because um, I've got a hundred, you know, fun stories about Christianity that, you know, everyone would, would have a great time watching it and you'd probably have a laugh. And, uh, you know, it would make you feel good. Um, but I think sometimes, especially when we find ourselves in times like we find ourselves in now, um, I think, you know, the only real thing that matters in this world is is truth and where we can find it. And, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that this is the only place that we can find the truth. And if we diligently seek for the truth, uh, we have to believe that God will reveal that to us. Um, and, you know, I think that certainly for me, um, when, whenever we find ourselves in times of trouble, the only real peace can be found in, in Christ. Um, and I know that you know the world just now is turbulent, and you know it's very hard to know, um, you know what we could necessarily rest our hat on. And the fact is, it remains the only real thing that we can rest our hat on is is, is 
the Holy Bible and God's Word and to diligently seek Him and to pray and fast and, you know, really, you know, humble ourselves and diligently seek God to reveal His His truths and His plans to us. Um, it also says in the Bible that, that you know, amongst uh, great times of trouble, and this is probably not a literal translation, but amongst great times of trouble, there will also be great times of revival, and we have to also seek God um, for for that, for our land, for Ayrshire, for Scotland, for the whole of the UK, um, you know, for Europe and the, the wider world. I think that the only thing that is going to turn any of this around, that's going to bring any sort of peace, is uh, you know for people to to turn to God, and I think that that starts with us. We have to we have to set an example. We have to have you know that something about us where people you know they kind of take notice that we're a bit different. Um, and you know I think that that all starts with having a a firm grounding in God's word, understanding what the scriptures say. Um, and you know, having a real searching and seeking for um, you know what what God wants to show to us. So I think that's probably um, all that I really have to say about that. Um, I'm quite comfortable um, with my message. I hope that it's landed. Um, I hope a few people have heard what it is that I think um, God is trying to say, um, albeit through what might be a, a, a less than average vessel but um, we uh, you know I want to just you know hopefully my sincerity um, and conviction and authenticity has come across in this video it's not been easy um, for me I've really wrestled with this um, I was kind of half not going to do it because I thought mm, people are going to think I'm crazy they're going to think that um, <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe a bit hardcore, um, but you know, I felt led um, just to share this and I'd like to finish with um, just a word of prayer um, and hopefully, you know, you guys can, can join with me. So, I don't often pray out loud, I normally pray on my own, but this is, um, oh, <laughs> this is a new one for me. So, Lord God, I pray that, you know, that your message will will absolutely land. Father God, I thank you for your um, your love and your mercy that you have for your people um, that you show us on a daily basis Father I pray that you would lead us and guide us um, with you know the words that you feel that we need to hear whether they come from other Christian friends whether they come through whatever platform Lord God um, you know uh, uh, you know, just even little things that friends might send us to encourage us. Lord, I pray that we would be able to find your message in, in everything that we that we view, everything that we consume in terms of media content, in terms of everything. Lord, I pray that you would make it really obvious to us what your what your message is, Father. Whilst there's so much deception, Lord, and the enemy is constantly trying to uh, pull us left and right trying to distract us with this thing and that thing, Lord God, I, help. I pray that you would help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, fixed on your plan, fixed on what it is that you have planned for our church at Seagate, for our families, Lord God, for our lives, for us as individuals. Um, Father, for our friends who aren't, aren't yet saved, who don't yet know the truth, Lord, I pray that you would give us the words to share with them, Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit would, would lead us and guide us and that we would feel that that prick in our conscience when we hear something that, that, that we know grieves you, Father. I pray that you, you know, we would we would have that recognition, Lord, that you would show us what, what is truth and, and what is not, Lord God. Um, I pray that you would encourage our leaders, Father. I pray that you would Lord God, protect Richard and his family. Um, I pray that you would protect all of our elders, um, and that you would, you know, that you would give them comfort in these times where, you know, leadership is not always easy, and certainly, especially when, 
you know, times are difficult um, and everyone's looking to our leaders for answers. And Lord, I pray that you would, that you would give our leaders the answers, Father. Um, for, you know, your ways are not our ways. Um, you know the plan that you have for us. And, you know, we have to absolutely trust you um, that you have everything under control. Um, that we can't use man's intellect for everything. There has to be an element of faith and trust in your covenant to us and what you've promised to us. Um, Lord God, I feel, I pray that, you know, we would be able to lay hold of, of the promises of you and the promises that you've made to us and, and our families, Lord God, um, and that we would feel your, your protection on us, Father God. And uh, I pray that, you know, that over these next few weeks that, you know, you would really encourage your people and the people would become closer to you. They would have a real sense of peace in the midst of everything that's, that's going on, Lord God. And uh, we pray for this in Jesus' name. And we thank you. We sincerely thank you for, for your son who you sent for us. Um, Jesus, we really, you know, we, we do not take for granted the, uh, the sacrifice that you made for every single one of us, um, for every single sin that, that, that all of us commit on a, you know, a daily and weekly basis. We do not take that for granted, Lord God. And, uh, you know, we, we want to be a, a people that, you know, you, you look down and you smile upon and that, you know, we fill your, your heart with joy um, when you see that we are living for you and that, you know, our, our, uh, our intentions are that we are diligently seeking you, Lord God. Um, and I pray for, you know, all of our Christian brothers and sisters at Seagate, Father. We, we also pray for Peter Maiden as, um, you know, as he's coming to his, uh, his grand entrance into glory, Father God. I pray that that would be a as smooth and as peaceful a transition as can be for his family, Father. Um, and I pray, Lord God, that you would, you would really, um, you would put your peace on that whole situation, Father. Um, and I also pray that, you know, anyone else within our, within our church, within our, our congregation, that if there is a, you know, if there is a need for, for prayer, for healing, Father God, I pray that your your hand would be on all of those lives, Lord God, and that they would they would know you and they would know that your intentions for them are for good, um, and that you know you have made commitments to your people, um, and I pray that you know that you would reveal those more and more to us, um, so as that we can take assurance in knowing that the promises of God are steadfast and sure. Um, I pray all of this in, uh, in Jesus' name. Amen.